Hello everyone, my name is Maxim Tsenkov, and I'm a PhD student working in the Barton Group at the University of Dundee. Today, I will be talking to you about some recent work on the armadillo repeat family. Let's first introduce what armadillo repeats are. Armadillo repeats are 41 amino acids long and are defined by a characteristic and conserved 3 alpha helical structural fold. And this conserved fold has a degenerate consensus sequence, as you can see below. Armadillo repeats are organized in tandem arrays that form superhelical domain structure, termed armadillo domains. And at the bottom here, you'll see there's this inner groove or the concave surface. It's primarily contributed by helix 3 in orange, while helix 1 and 2 in uh, green and blue respectively make up the convex surface. And widely distributed across kingdoms, they are present in many proteins involved in a myriad of fundamental cellular processes where they mediate protein-protein interactions on a concave surface. Now, let's study how we will apply a novel approach to study the armadillo repeat family with human population data. I gathered armadillo repeat annotations from two sources, Uniprot Swiss Pro database and Interpro. I did a non-redundant merge of all annotations to produce 2,270 armadillo repeats in 325 armadillo-containing proteins across 57 organisms. We used the AMPS suite of programs to align my armadillo sequences to the high-quality PFAM seed alignment for armadillos with secondary structure-dependent gap penalties. Now, with a multiple sequence alignment, we can learn more about a family by studying across species. But we had one question in our group, which was this. Is variation within a single species, such as humans, the same as across species? Now, the human sequence residues in PFAM domains have zero variance, and thus the variant data today is still too sparse to provide a comparative picture of genetic variation between individual protein residues in the proteome. So how do we tackle the issue of variant sparsity? Well, recent work in our group has incorporated human population variant data from the Genome Aggregation Database, or NOMAD, into conventional sequence analysis across all PFAM families. NOMAD, I should say, is a database containing human genome sequencing data from healthy individuals with no known disease phenotypes. Now, this approach here lets us aggregate variants at an alignment column level instead of a residue level. Thus, boosting the statistical power of variant analysis. And to further boost the power of our analysis, we decided to focus on repeat families like armadillo repeats, since repeats present many more copies uh, than any other domains within a single species. Now, once the variant sparsity problem was solved, we wanted to understand the relationship between sequence variation across species, including human, and sequence variation within a single species, in this case, human. Now, let's explore this relationship in armadillo repeats. If we look on the left here, on the x-axis is the Schenken divergence score percentile rank, which is a measurement of amino acid conservation in an alignment. On the y-axis, we have the missense enrichment score, measuring how an alignment column is enriched above the regression line or depleted below the regression line for missense variants relative to other positions in the alignment. Each data point here represents a column in my alignment. Sites under selective pressure in the human population, or constrained in the human population, highlight the same positions with structural and functional importance that dictate domain evolution as observed in the protein residue conservation. I followed this up by supporting positions constrained in the human population with a comprehensive structural analysis. I gathered 265 armadillo repeats across 162 PDBE structures and built a contact map to identify the most frequently observed residue pair interactions in the armadillo repeat family. So right now we will focus on positions which are conserved and missense depleted and unconserved positions that are also missense depleted. Does the structural data support positions constrained in the human population? We studied and combined both intra-repeat contacts, so within a repeat, and inter-repeat contacts, so between repeats of an armadillo domain, and combined it here, visualized in grey in this figure. 
And then we referred back to the positions highlighted from the sequence and variant analysis and only visualize classified positions that agree with the structural analysis. So if we see here in blue, these are these conserved positions that are missense depleted. So there's a population constraint. This confirms our method, which make up this hydrophobic core running along the full length of the armadillo domain. And then uh, to supplement them, we have these other conserved positions in red, but they're actually counterintuitively enriched for missense variants. And these positions may, uh, when you look at the variants uh, making them up, uh, they are actually uh, conservative mutations and therefore these positions may continue to evolve with uh, a pool of amino acids with favorable physical chemical properties. And then, most interestingly, we followed up this unconserved position 4, constrained in the population as well, is supported by the structure of data with ha having a high contact number. Thus, we learn about this novel site, which may have a key structural role in the armadillo domain. Now that we have supported positions important for the armadillo domain fold, let's look at where they interact with their substrates. On the far left, colored with a red gradient, visualizes where the bulk of the protein substrate interactions are located on the armadillo repeat. To the right of that figure, we see the positions that we have inferred in our sequence and variant analysis. So in blue, we have these conserved and missense depleted sites, which may be important for binding affinity. Whereas the unconserved and missense depleted sites in green may be binding specificity sites involved with protein substrate recognition. On the right, we see um, an example of an armadillo domain interacting with a protein substrate in orange, showing how and where a single substrate interacts with residues on a concave surface where we colored the classified sites depleted for missense variants. I want to finish off by saying that this novel cross-disciplinary approach demonstrates how the conservation and variation features are constrained by structure, so these features can be used to infer structural features.